So thanks, Ariel. Thanks, the organizer, for putting together this conference. It's, uh, it's really nice to see people after a few years. That has been really uh, difficult, I guess, for everybody. Uh, sort of get used to, uh, to talk to people face to face and see at the eyes. And it's actually, I forgot how, how nice it is. So for me, it's also the first conference after. In, 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 in person, I mean, after, after a few years. So, what I'm going to be talking to you today is actually moving a little bit from what we have seen before to a little larger scale, uh, moving from 2D, just trying to argue that it's life beyond 2D, and a little on a mesoscopic sort of lens scale instead of a, a nano. But I uh, just uh, try to convince you that this is also, is also interesting. So, the title of my talk is Soft and Slippery. And for an, a few years now, we have been uh, looking into uh, compliance surfaces and the effect of surface deformation and how important it is uh, in, many, in many different problems. It's actually something that is known for many, many years now, but uh, it's in, been increasingly realized how, uh, how significant it is the coupling between the uh, hydrodynamic and el elastic uh, field to uh, to describe the, the, uh, the behavior of a system. And to describe this, to, to, to talk about this, we have been investigating uh, um, some microreals. Just can you imagine of a little little balls of a few hundred nanometers that you can put on surfaces and try to, to deform. And so how this is interesting, uh, how this is important, probably the best uh, reason to argue is in the, in the field of, of biotribology. You have uh, compliance surface everywhere on your bodies and on the bodies of the life systems. And uh, you can talk about the, the best known is probably the, 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 the magnesium uh, uh, articulations and obvious joints, but there is, uh, there is trivial everywhere. You, you probably, probably know, have been described by many things like, like Dawson and other, others. You have the ocular trivology, the, uh, the, the, the red uh, uh, the Cells that are going in your capillary, in your in your in your in your body, in your body, uh, all of all of those systems are actually being confined by compliant boundaries. And again, the coupling between the hydrodynamic and the elastic field is really important. It needs to be described if you want to really understand what's going on. So our model system again is this uh, polynipe and microgel. The chemical details are not really very important. What is interesting of these systems is they can do little. Like the chemist can do little sort of uh, gel of few hundred nanometers on, on site. And this is particularly nice, the polynipan, because it's thermoresponsive. So if you are at uh, sort of room temperature, they are very uh, uh, swollen or hydrated. But if you increase the temperature, you go through a lower concentrated uh, temperature, and then they actually colla collapse a little bit. They get a little smaller. They get less hydrated and, uh, and, uh, and more, more, uh, more, more read, if you want. So you actually have a nice, a nice sort of, of uh, knob to control the elastic property of your system. And also, that it, uh, another thing that is nice about this uh, system is that you can actually put it on surfaces. So what I'm showing you here is uh, just uh, a thing micrograph of these little particles, soft particles that has been just self-assembled on surfaces. So on the left is at high temperature, on the right is at low temperature. And you can see how different it is. At the left, you can really see the well-defined particles on the right is much more difficult to see them. They are there. And you can easily uh, get a very uh, high coverage on the surface. You can have a nice, fairly controlled layers, compliant layer on, on your surface by using this system. So this actually is a, is a good uh, model system to, to, sort of, uh, to sort of play with these uh, this sort of materials. And, uh, the way we have been studying it on the uh, on the trivial experiments they use in the surface forces apparatus. If you don't know this system, it's so it, this it machine is like a like a big AFM. You can measure forces between surfaces in a very well controlled fashion. The typical radii we use cross cylinder configuration, so it's like a sphere on a plate. And the typical radius of the cylinder is about one centimeter, and you can measure with high precision the geometry of the system. So you have uh, we use interferometry to get a really precise map of the geometry with a resolution of, a, of an Armstrong or so. 
So what you need to retain is that we are able to keep these two surfaces to get together at a certain separation that we know. We measure it in real time by using interferometry. And we measure the normal interaction and the lateral interaction, sort of as you do with the uh, scanning prof microscopy. The only thing is at a much larger scale. So a typical uh, contact size is few tens of microns. And the typical radii of the contact is a, is a centimeter. So we put our, our, our microgels between those surfaces uh, in the way I just showed you in the, slide, in the, in the previous slide. Uh, uh, so we get something like, like, like this is illustrated here. We use mica surfaces just to, to, uh, to, to uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a very nice material. You can, you can get molecularly smooth, very flat, uh, clean uh, mica, and you can put then your microgels on top of this mica and this mic is glued on the ceiling. There is not all that different of a real, uh, of a, I, I argue it's not all that, that different of a real uh, uh, articul uh, articular uh, mammalian articular joint. Then you have the, the hard uh, bone that is coated by, by, by the cartilage that is lubricated by the synovial fluid. So we're gonna be doing sort of the same. We're gonna have a hard mica that is gonna be coated by a soft layer of few hundred, uh, 100 nanometers or so of our hydrogel, and this thing is going to be lubricated by, by water. So I am going to talk about, to you about two things today. So the first thing is what's going to happen on the contact mechanics of this problem, and the second thing is going to be about the lubrication of this system. So if you just measure the, uh, let's see what I was, if you measure the normal force of this system that I just showed you, so it's just approaching these two coated, micro coated surfaces together, so it's like going from something here where they are separated to something that they are more closer. You get a number of, of, of force profile, as we call it, so this is what I'm showing here. So going from, from, from uh, cooler color to hotter colors means like increasing temperature, of course. So when you have low temperature, you have a swollen microgel that is interacting very far away because it's, it's swollen. And you have a long range repulsion that actually it kicks in very far away. On the contrary, if you actually hit the system, you're gonna have a, a, a force profile that is much short range. The system, the, the particles has collapsed, and then they see each other, like, the, 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 figuratively speaking, much, much closer. So what you need to retain from this overhead, though, is that you have a long range repulsion between these surfaces. So this distance that I'm showing here is the separation between the two mica surfaces, and the, uh, the, the Microreals start interacting a few hundred nanometers away. So there is a long range repulsion. So if now you try to sort of measure the friction force at given velocity, it's really, it's really not very important. What we observe, there are a few things, so here I'm showing on black, again, a typical, uh, a typical uh, normal force, and on red, a typical uh, friction force, so this could be a low temperature. There are a few things that are actually very interesting. The range of the normal and friction forces are really different. This has been seen many times before on this kind of system. So you see the normal force much farther away than the friction force. But a second aspect that has been less, less reported that is not that very easy to see here is that the friction force seems to actually uh, get to a, to, a, to a level that it doesn't really increase a lot anymore. So in black, the normal force seems to be increasing and increasing. On red, the friction force seems to sort of get to a plateau. And you can see that a little bit better if instead of doing this representation, you do it the friction as a function of, of normal force. And what you can see here, so this will be uh, the, the black data here, that you actually increase and then sort of get, it seems to get to a plateau. And we found this actually quite surprising because this really was really unexpected. So we, we were really wondering what's actually going on here. And the answer is actually quite, quite simple and can be, it came from here. What I'm showing here is the geometry that we measure on the system at the same time we are we actually increasing the load. So from, from, from violet to red is actually increasing the load. So this is half of, of the geometry, so the thing is actually symmetric, so I'm not showing the whole thing. But this is what you see when you increase the pressure between the two surfaces. The surfaces get closer together, uh, as you expect. But then if you actually uh, shift the, uh, the point of closest approach sort of to put all the curves together, you see something that may be not immediately trivial to you, but uh, 
the mechanic of the contact is not is not all not at all trivial. So the thing seems to seems to be instead of a uh, instead of what you actually expect, like I am showing here at the right. Let, let me try to get clear the Hertz sort of behavior. What you're seeing a Hertz behavior, a typical Hertz behavior, is that you press two con two, two surfaces together, and what you call the actual area of contact sort of increase with the uh, with the applied pressure and gets bigger and bigger. Uh, as you can expect. However, on the center, what we see with this kind of system, because you have a long range repulsion, instead of getting a larger a larger area of contact, the system sort of get deforming this in this way. It's just sort of holding a lot of load on the outside, and it's not getting a lot closer, and it's not really getting larger on the contact area. And the reason is because we have this long range repulsion, and the system that I showed you before, that the system is getting stiffer and stiffer when you press, that it's getting harder and harder to get in contact. So when you actually put a, a, global, a, global, uh, a global normal load, the system, instead of actually moving this, the central region that is much more stiffer, is moving, let's say, the outside region that is much weaker. So instead of being growing like this, like the, the hairs, a contact is more growing like, like this way. So that has actually large consequences of, 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 on the behavior of the system because it, it gets increasingly difficult to actually indent, let's say, to get closer because it's getting uh, tougher. And this is the reason why the, uh, the, uh, the friction gets uh, is, is stopped growing when you, when you keep pressing. Just because the system is not getting any closer, the contact is not getting any larger, the system is deforming like sort of this way, and the, the region outside of the periphery of the contact is too far away, and as you can see, again, from the comparison between normal and, normal and, 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 and friction force, if you're increasing the, the, the approximation of the system in this area, this is not contributing any longer to the, uh, to the friction. It's just the, the, the region of, the, of, your, of your contact that is closer, to, let's say a few tenths of nanometer, that is gonna contribute to the friction. So this is the reason why you, we get to, to this sort of plateau here. And you can actually, uh, so, so the, the main message of this first part is that for this sort of system, you cannot use like JKR or DMT or Hertz contact. You need to take into account the effect of a long repulsion to describe the contact mechanic. And if you do that, so that's what I'm showing here, is what you will expect. So what I'm showing here is what is the geometry of the system when you actually compress, so this is now a theoretical calculation, assume that there is a long range sort of exponential interaction between the surfaces, so the one we, we saw on, on the experiment. So depending on the compliance of the contact, you can get a contact situation that is very different. So here on the dashed line, is a, a system that is a effective modular of one gigapascal, and the continuous line is an effective a, a, a modular of 10 gigapascal. And you can see that the harder system gets much closer than the softer system, and the deformation in the softer system gets stuck much farther away. So when you have a compliant system, the main bottom message for this first part is when you have a compliant system, you're gonna get stuck much farther away if you have a long range repulsion, and this is gonna make your friction force stop, and this actually, actually, for us was very sort of unexpected. So, uh, so that's what I do say in this, in this uh, slide. So for the time that, I, that is left, now I'm gonna go to the second part, the sort of more, more dynamic part of the, of, the, of the thing. What actually happened when you have this soft compliant surface and you move one with respect to each other? Uh, a good point to start is probably the Strivex curve that everybody here probably is aware of, that you can see that you have different regime of, 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 of friction depending upon the, uh, mainly the separation of, of between the surfaces and the speed that, that you, are, you are moving one with respect to each other. So you have, as you all know, a region of boundary lubrication when the surfaces are really, really close. When the surfaces are separated by a, by a film of fluid, you have more like hydrodynamic lubrication. And actually, in this, this, this regime, you, have, you can have uh, probably two different scenarios. You can have some sort of a hydrostatic generated film. So you put a pressure, you generate a flame, you separate the surfaces. Or you can have a hydrodynamic lubrication in which the film separating the surfaces is generated by the motion between the surfaces. And that's what I'm going to be looking into today. So 
to understand this, uh, the people have, this is actually really, really sort of an old, old stuff that has been going around probably since the work of those on the 1950s. And they, they put together all this sort of interesting uh, diagram in which you can illustrate the different regime that you can see. So this is uh, a, a, a bit complicated, but the, the, the thing that we need to look at here is there are two parameters. One that is related to the, uh, to the viscosity of the fluid, and especially to the sensitivity of the viscosity to the applied pressure. So that's what we, we, you would call piezo viscosity. And a second parameter that is more related to the uh, elastic properties of the, of the system. So what you need to sort of think of is that to the, to the right is, uh, is more elastic and to the left more compliant, to the left is less compliant. Up is more sensitive to pressures of viscosity, and down is less sensitive to viscosity. So you can, gross sum of all, you can identify four regimes. In, in this corner here, you have a viscosity that doesn't change with the applied load, and the system is rigid, so it doesn't deform. Down here, you have a viscosity that doesn't change but the system is compliant, so this will be what we are going to be talking today. Here, you're going to have a system that the viscosity is very dependent on pressure, but it's rigid. And here, you have a viscosity that is dependent on pressure, and the system is relatively elastic. And this has been the interesting of most of what have, has been done on electrohydrodynamic lubrications for many, many decades. And uh, this is probably this, uh, this sort of co contact that you are maybe all familiar with. What is important to, to understand is that what is key here is that when you apply a very large pressure between a non-conformal contact, non-conformal surfaces, if there is some piece of viscosity, the viscosity of the lubricant increases so much, so that the, that's actually what's happening in industrial gears and everywhere, the, the pressure increases so much that you keep the surfaces apart and you deform the, the contact in this funny way. So this has been this an incredibly difficult problem because you have the, the non-linearity of your Navier-Stokes equation and the non-local character of your elastic, uh, elastic field and has been uh, described by many workers, probably Dawson is uh, the, 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 the first name that, that came out, uh, by, by numerical approximations and by, by finite different differential element uh, calculation. But it has been actually well, well studied and it's really probably the most successful thing on trigology of last, last century. But what we're actually curious about is this, this other regime here. So this is a regime of, of, of relevant to a, to a to compliance system. And what happened here is that the, the surfaces are so compliant that you really don't have any change on viscosity. You have a isoviscous fluid, just water. Uh, nevertheless, your, sur your boundaries are so compliant that they, they do deform on their modest hydrodynamic field. And the difficulty of this, of this problem is to solve the coupling between these hydrodynamic forces and the elastic deformation. You have these hydrodynamic uh, equations that are nonlinear. You have these elastic uh, equations that are non-local. So the, the, the local deformation don't depend only on the local pressure, but on the pressure pretty much everywhere. And this is really a hellish to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to solve. However, what is uh, a, it's nice about this uh, with respect to the, uh, to the, to the more rigid system is that you have a viscosity that is constant and the hydrodynamic equations are much simpler. So you actually can uh, hope for an analytic ap approach to describe this system. And a few tens of years, a lot of people have been working on that, especially on theory. So I can mention a few words later, but the main thing that, 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 that the, to grasp what is the physics of, of, of the problem, just follow. If you have a rigid, let's say a sphere of a cylinder on, on front of a rigid surface lubricated by a liquid, and if you are very close and the, the radii is much larger than the, than the separation, you can use the lubrication approximation and the Stokes equation. And in that case, things are relatively simple, and especially they are temporally reversible. That means that the system, when you go forward, and then you want to go backward, everything is to reverse. Uh, and that immediately implies that you cannot have a normal force. Let me try to get clear here. You have uh, the, the hydrodynamic interaction between this non-conformal contact, and you, the, the question is what happens when I approach and I move? Is there any possibility of getting a normal force that is going to help me lubricate and generate uh, uh, a lubricant film? And the answer is that 
in the axis symmetric geometry, rigid? The answer is no, and you can actually calculate it. You're gonna get a pressure field that's gonna be a, a, a anti-symmetric, so this is, will, will be the, gener the pressure generated when you move the, the, the sphere with respect to the, feet, the, to the surface. So it's gonna be a negative pressure in the backwards and a positive pressure in the, in, in the front. And the system, the, then the interval is gonna be zero and you have no net lift force, no net normal force. So this is just mathematically, but again, it's very easy to see how it goes. You have a thing that is symmetric. Stokes equation is temporarily reversible. If you go up, let's, uh, let's suppose that there is a normal force. If you go up, this normal force, when you go back, it will go down. And there is no way that the system knows what is left and right. So it cannot, the only situation that you have a force going up, forward, going down, backward, is that it's zero, uh, just by symmetry. However, when you have a surface that is deformable, and this is what you have here, let's say that you, in our case, you have a rigid solid with a soft solid on top, you are gonna have a symmetry uh, breaking. The, 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 the symmetry is gonna break, the system is gonna deform, and you're gonna, gonna pass, goes from a, a pressure field that is uh, anti-symmetric to a pressure field that is no further anti-symmetric, and if you do the integral of the pressure field all over the contact, you are gonna start generating, uh, uh, obtaining a, 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 a a finite different from zero uh, lift force. And most of the, the, the rest of the time I have, I'm just gonna be talking about lift forces. Uh, they have been looking into this from a theoretical point of view for a number of seasons. The oldest uh, paper that I know related to this problem was, was the, the 93 by Sekimora Libler. Uh, they did a, a very nice uh, sort of uh, uh, perturbative analysis, so that means very low perturbation of the system, very low deformations, and they got this expression for the, uh, for the expected lift force, one thing that is proportional to the square of the velocity, and it's proportional to the inverse of the cube of the film between the surfaces. This, uh, this uh, problem was much, much further investigated by Stockheim and Mahadevan a few, few years ago, and they really went through a lot of zoology of different systems. This is a really nice paper here. They went through a zoology of different systems and they got to the same sort of a scaling, a scaling law. Uh, the, the lift forces is gonna go to the square of the, of the velocity and the Q, inverse cube of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the film. And it's also gonna be to the inverse of the uh, young moduli, which means that if your system gets softer, you're gonna have larger lift force and the opposite, which is sort of a kind, a kind of interesting. This is valid only for very small perturbations and for just a elastic response. However, people uh, uh, have been looking into, into much, more, uh, much more complications. And the main thing is, uh, message for this part is that you can have generation of a non-inertial leaf force that is gonna help you separating the surfaces. The fluid is gonna come in, it's gonna lubricate your surface, it's gonna be very good for the, for the, for the, for the moving part. So the people in, in Netherlands, uh, they have been uh, looking now into, into, into the influence of not only the elasticity, but the viscous elasticity of the system. And they have shown uh, that the uh, presence of a dissipative part on your moduli has also a, a, a role to play. And in particular, if your system is very dissipative, I just pass you the details, but it's gonna have a, a detrimental effect on this leaf force. So this is the leaf force that you are gonna measure, and this is a ratio of time, some sort of a Deborah number here that tells you how, how fast you are stimulating the system. If you go very fast, so it's essentially elastic. So you have a, a large lift force. But if you go slower and you go going closer to the system, to the time the system can react, the, 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 uh, the effect is, is reduced. However, it's, it's always there. And uh, these people also in Netherlands has looked at the opposite case of not very small perturbation, but a large perturbation, which actually is very relevant. Uh, so in the theoretical part and modeling part has been a lot of work being done on the experimental part, probably we're a little bit lagging behind for the sick of the time. Uh, so there are not that many uh, experimental works that have been uh, emerging so far. So this is one that we published a few years ago. It was like a, we didn't know what we were 
looking at, but what we observed, we were looking at exactly this problem, a lubricated polymer, so this is not our micro gel jet, it's just a polymer on the surfaces, and what we saw when we measured the force, the, the stress as a function of velocity, is that the, the, this thing increased by a model that we uh, just not detailing today, but what was surprising is that at high velocity, the, uh, the force was going down, and the system was getting separated. So we got this without knowing. We got this evidence of the uh, of this this leaf force that we could actually describe by the model I just showed you before. So we look at this in much more detail with our microreal. So that's what I'm showing here. I'm just going to talk about this in the last three minutes that I have. Uh, in two words, in black is what you see at high temperature. And what you are seeing there is the separation between our mica surface at different velocity. And you see a clear evidence of emergence of this least force that is going higher and higher with velocity. However, when we decrease the temperature, this effect is much, much less important. This is because the system is getting swollen and it's getting more dissipative, as I just showed you two slides ago, and the effect is much less important. In the experimental part, there is a problem. Is that actually, uh, just going to illustrate it here, in the theory, it's easy. You, it's easy. you can fix your surface. You say the fill is this thickness and everything is fine. But on the experiments, you actually need to apply the load using a spring, and you have to keep your surfaces somewhere. And if you think about it, the fact that you are having a, a leaf force that is emerging between your moving contact is going to make that the, the actual load that you are applying with this spring here is going to be changing when this surface is actually be moving, pushed by the leaf force. So you really cannot really keep, or usually you do not keep the film constant. That is, that, that's what is modeled by the, by the theories. And you cannot really keep the load constant either because it's just, just changing. Everything is changing. So that complicates things a little bit. So the thing that we try to do is just to impose a feedback loop. And because we can measure the, I'm pretty much done. We can, we can measure the separation. We can impose a, a fit that look to actually keep this, this gap together, this gap fixed, and this is sort of what we did to sort of uh, to be able to match our, our experiment with the, with, the, with, the, with the theories. And just to make a long story short, we could verify that we have a, a, a leaf force that actually scale more or less well with the square of the velocity. And if you uh, take into account the fact that the uh, that you are compressing your, 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 your layer and the uh, elastic moduli is not really constant. Uh, again, you can look all of this, this paper. We also verified that this leaf force goes more or less by the inverse cube of the uh, separation between the surfaces. So with that, I just, I think I just took all my time. I just want to say that the last few years, a number of papers have shown the emergency of this leaf force on soft matter or soft systems. So this is an example on a particle moving by a, by a decorated uh, tube, a cylinder moving by a, a, by a soft surface or something done with the scanning probe microscopy. And with that, I just uh, finish. I just want to conclude with this, is that in both cases, the static and the dynamic, finally, the, the conclusion is that if you want to keep friction and, and we are low, just better keep your surfaces apart. And with that, just... <laughs> I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Like stay home message. <laughs> Best in town, yes. Thank you. Uh, in the, the, for the second part, it, I think it's just a quick clarification, but that case where you said there was a cancellation of the normal, fo normal stress, so there was no normal force, uh, was this for, uh, so I take it there's no applied load in that very small perturbation, you can apply a very small load as long as you don't deform a lot your, your, your geometry. Okay. But I, actually, what I was meaning is just uh, the leaf force, the force generated by the hydrodynamic field. Okay. I understand. Just, okay. Thank you. Apply a load and Thank you. Say for the system you're looking at, you, you the, there is the stresses are so low that you don't need to worry about piezo viscous effect, or the material, the fluid doesn't have a strong piezo viscous effect. Water. It's water. Yeah, it's it's all. It wasn't. It was pure water. 
Okay, then very very little piezo viscous. Okay. But I mean, the, again, the pressure is just a megapascal at the most. Okay, so this is why it doesn't matter. Okay. Have you seen people examine this for more uh, systems, hydrocarbon systems, where you do have piezo viscous effect, and 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 is that is that map still valid? Uh, the Johnson map. The, the, the system I was showing, the, this, the, the description, no. It's much more complicated, and you have to go to probably the, the description that Dawson and these sort of people much more elaborate. Oh, yeah. But for soft system with hydrocarbon people, yes. The thing is that with soft compliant boundaries, you cannot really get to high pressures because Therefore, the content yeah. gets getting larger and larger. And people have looked into those sort of lubricants, and the, the thing worked fine. Like this. Uh, that's example I quickly show. They work with glycerol and, and, uh, and, and all hydrocarbons, and things was really fine. But it was, again, megapascal pressure system. Thank you. Thank you for a very nice talk. So I have this uh, question that uh, so if you apply vertical oscillation to this contact, then the hydrodynamic force might uh, increase the adhesion to your, to your uh, tip. So um, would it be possible to increase the, the, the vertical force, the yeah. F that you were measuring? Well, well, usually in this kind of system, the adhesion is really very low because you have this, this strong repulsion. Even if you do this sort of oscillation, you don't uh, you don't don't really get any any adhesion problem. So that would not change anything. Actually, it will change the, the response. One interesting thing about doing oscillation is that people with this people are even able to measure the rheology of the elastic properties of the material without touching it, because you start vibrating your thing and you measure the response. The deformation of the uh, of, of the surface is gonna talk to your probe, even though you're not touching it. And you can really look at what's going on, and this is the work of Elizabeth Charlet and others. You can really see what's going down there if you did this oscillation that you suggest. The talking between the hydrodynamic and the elastic, you can see it on the response on the cantilever. It's, it's gonna tell you what's gonna happen down there. I found that really fascinating. Sure. So you can do a rheology without touching. Yeah. And Elizabeth Charlet has done a lot of that, and it's really fa that is really fascinating. Not to do with that tissue. More questions? Or remote questions? Or remote?